Hello everybody, welcome to the January vlog. Da 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 vlog. First of all, I know, I bought a new lipstick. Thank you for noticing. Number two, something very exciting is happening today. It is currently like 10 o'clock. I need to leave the house at half past because we're going straight to the hair salon to get this bad boy shaped up. I have not been to the hairdresser in approximately, I want to say, a healthy seven months. And the hair has grown out. The shape has grown out of the hair. And now it's very Farquadian, if you know what I'm saying. Married to the Muffin Man. The Muffin Man? The Muffin Man! She's married to the Muffin Man. Plan for today. I haven't yet written the plan for today. This is yesterday's page. We need to journal today's page. I will say, first impression on the Hobonichi's daily pages, they are intense. Um, those were the pages I was most excited to use when I first bought the Hobonichi planner because I'm the type of person that like every morning I wake up and go brush my teeth and then I make a mental list of the stuff that I need to finish that day. And it was just a nice thought to have somewhere daily that I can go and write that down so that I don't forget. Like pages, numbers, all that jazz. They are intense. I feel immense guilt if I skip one. So I will go back retrospectively and fill it in. But the plan for today is I'm going to explore town a little bit. Hope and pray that it does not rain. I want to get some makeup items and then we're going to go get apples. Because every time I get the grocery shop delivered, they are like always magically out of apples and I can never get apples. And I just miss apples a lot. And then come home, draw. We got to do drawing today. I don't know what yet, but I'm feeling snow monkeys randomly. So we'll... We'll also do that. Cool, that's it. I will see you in a bit. Have fun. Cue a montage. versatile i even like it like this i showed the lovely lady at the salon whose name is caroline by the way a photo of mia farrow and she was like say no more mia who it's maggie now i'm still getting used to it but the true test anybody knows this who's ever had a haircut in their life ever the true test of a haircut is when you get home and wash it for the first time and you see the way that it naturally falls together i also bought the nyx control freak brow stuff because y'all these brows are not giving. Oh, I hate these labels with a par burning passion. Anyway, this is a little eyebrow gel. As you can tell, these are out of control. These were on a very deep discount from the cheap side of Superdrug, so this feels flimsy as all hell. Join me on this journey. The plan is that I want my eyebrows to be... Wait, <laughs> do I? <laughs> Wait, identity crisis. Okay, I want my eyebrows to be straight. I do want to cut these little itty bitty boys at the end off, so. How do people do this though? I've never done this before. I don't, I don't have a comb. Oh God, I'm gonna have little hairs on my face for months now. It said 45 degree angle. Where do you stop? Okay, I don't trust my instincts like at all. This feels correct. Does it look different? Does it just look different to me? Cause I'm the one looking at it. Now there's eyebrow hairs everywhere too. That's fantastic. Do I like shave my whole face? We'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Okay. I don't want to overdo it and look like one of those horror stories on TikTok. I don't want to end up on a compilation on a YouTube channel. I feel like that's enough. Okay. I'll stop there. Are you seeing this? 
I feel like my eyebrows will forever look like two commas on my face. I'm gonna call it a day. Wait, no, I need to do the unibrow. I'm so scared I'm just gonna cut through my face. I don't know. I feel like we did something here today. <laughs> Let's try this guy. Oh, if she can open it. Okay, I read no reviews about this or anything before I bought it. Okay, you can tell this is not where my skills lie. Also, I have a bald spot in the middle of my eyebrow. I feel like something's happening. I don't know. Is it the placebo effect? Is it the placebo effect? I believe I was having the placebo effect. Placebo. Placebo. I need to buy something to fill these eyebrows in because I have the world's weakest eyebrows for no reason. I'm Eastern European. Which of these do we try? I'm curious about this because I never get colors this light. Can you all make perforated lines on these so that people like me don't struggle out here on the internet? I don't know. I don't know. Try the other one. I actually bought this one for freckles because I, the last few years, just love doing colorful freckles. I don't really care enough about what people think when I go outside that I'd be too shy to have colorful freckles on my face. Like, I'm not that type of person. This brush is whack. It's flat. So you're sort of speckling the product onto your face. I don't know. I want to go chill for a second, settle into this new haircut, see if I can take some cute photos for the family who are gonna hate it. And yeah, I'll be back to draw. Bye guys! Hello everybody, welcome to a new day. It's currently 8 o'clock in the morning, which is why it's dreadfully dark outside and all of the lights are on. Quick review of the short hair. I've rolled out of bed like this, I did nothing to it. You can probably tell to be honest, but... I'm digging what's happening here, so super happy with the way that turned out. Now, the last time I spoke to you, I sat down to sketch that same night, and my brain just felt like it had this massive block in front of it. Like, I just couldn't come up with ideas that I thought would look good on a page. I couldn't come up with compositions that I found engaging. It was just, we were on the struggle bus big time. And so I did something that I haven't done in a very long time. I went on Instagram and asked you guys, what should we draw today? Now, lo and behold, the majority of suggestions that I received were animals. Which is fair enough, because I don't tend to draw a lot of animals at all. And so I thought what would be a really fun idea is if we drew a piece of artwork together for Instagram. I thought that might be a nice little start to the day because it's Monday. I try to keep my work Monday to Friday. And so today, like any other person who might work in an office, it's my first day back uh, for the week. Thankfully, I had some hot chocolate left over from last night. Is January too late to have a Christmas mug? Don't answer that. Okay, let's get a drawn.
comfy down there. That that happened to, so it makes me happy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so gorgeous, Alice. This was like, right, I'm just gonna draw a load so people can. Okay. <laughs> You're not in the shot, sir. Oh, okay. Be a social Hello, this is Editing Maggie. I come from the future to share with you a warning. The warning is that after this point in the video, it was mid-January and Jack brought home the worst, meanest, most monstrous cold. And we normally never get colds, like we're quite good with being able to swerve the flu. This flu absolutely knocked my socks off it like sent my spirit into the next dimension and so the rest of this video is me sounding very nasally and basically promising to do a bunch of cool creative work and then feeling too tired and gross and stuffy to actually do it as i said from this point on there's no plot just vibes so um do with that what you will and i will see you soon hello how are you first of all there it is. Yep, that's the that's the big finisher to my day. Hello everybody. Welcome back. It's been a while. It's been over a week. Um I can't speak too loud. My voice is gone. My throat is sore. I feel like last night a rabid gang of cats came into our flat, walked into the bedroom as if they were paying rent on the place and just scratched all of my throat out. And also, I feel like I say this in every video, but I promise I own more sweaters than this. I swear this is the only sweater I've worn the past 30 minutes probably that you've been watching this and it's now the third week of the month. So I do want to tell you that this gets washed between the times that you see me. Believe that if you want to. I'm not here to convince you, but I did want to put that out into the ether. I So yes, as I was saying, I feel like hot garbage. And so it's 10 o'clock at night and I'm gonna make myself a giant tasty bowl of noodles because I deserve it. These are our noodles of choice. They're delicious. And if you have a cold, they feel great in your throat. As with any noodles, noodles, noodles 
I'm saying words. As with any noodles, you start with water. As I'm making these, here's a collection of stuff that has happened the past week and a half that I haven't seen you. I had a big lovely meeting in London. It went very well. I'll be able to talk more about it in April. Sorry about that. I asked. I asked if I could talk about it and they said, let's not. Number two, I sketched two versions of all covers for our four book superhero series. That is now with the publisher and I'm waiting for feedback on the sketches so that I can amend. Oh, <laughs> I tried. I really tried to catch you with my mind. At the point of the inking, I'm gonna ask if I can show you stuff. What else has happened? Not the Christmas tree. As you can tell, that's still very much in place. We had a whole week off together, me and Jack, and we thought about taking it down every single day, and we didn't. I posted two new illustrations on Instagram. They both did moderately well. You want to go for that camera? <laughs> Show everything. So that's it. The player has the option of buying. Oh. I buy. <laughs> I buy. Oh, so if you roll a double, you roll again. Oh shit! If you throw three doubles in a row, then you got to you got to drill. Mm -hmm. It's crazy, it's because I'm sick, I promise. Should I go? Yeah. Also, these are so retro and it's so cool. Oh, yeah. Annuity? Annuity. Mm -hmm. Snapped. We're not going to be homeowners in the next 50 years. <laughs> we never have to know. <coughs> Income tax refund, collect 20 pounds. As if they ever try to give people money back. Just an update on the situation. Just, just having the full impact there of what's going on. <laughs> you have to zoom out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. <laughs> Annuity matures collect 100, baby. You're currently being held up by a McDonald's wet paper straw, by the way, so... Before we start, let me just apologize for all of the noises that are coming from around the house. Washing machines running, dishwashers running, little heater friend is like plugged in just there. I'm sorry that you're having to see this like that, you know? My nose, stuffy. Eyes, watery. This eye looked like I'd been punched in the face yesterday. So as you can tell, I've taken some time off work and I've been sat on the sofa with my blanket and my heater on downing Lemsip, which for those of you unfamiliar, Lemsip is a mixture of paracetamol and then a bunch of decongestants that have been made into this powdered form that you dissolve and it tastes like hot garbage. This tastes like hot bile in any flavor that you buy. It does not matter. It'll always taste like you are regurgitating the last of your stomach contents on like the hottest continent on earth. Hello, it's me, Editing Maggie, once again. Here with extra tidbits of valuable information that you never thought you needed, but I'll impart them anyway. I don't know what possessed me to do this, but I went through two whole boxes of lamp sip. I was on the third for like going on two weeks. And I decided to read the box out of the blue. I was like, I've never read this box. What's on it? While I'm waiting for the kettle, I might as well find out what the literary geniuses of the marketing department of lamp sip have put onto this box. Turns out that if you have autoimmune conditions, such as Graves disease. 
you shouldn't take this because it amplifies all of your symptoms. So the Lemsip actually ended up making me feel worse and better at the same time paradoxically, and I could have in fact spared myself days upon days of dry heaving this disgusting liquid out of my stomach uh, by simply taking a paracetamol. I just wanted to share that with you because I thought it was hilarious when I found out. Enjoy this little bit of extra information and farewell. But it's the only thing that works. Anyway, that's my preamble on why I look and feel like a dumpster fire right now. I'm feeling a little bit better today. I don't sound like I am, but I genuinely am. So... I've got my little, little, tiny list of stuff that needs to be accomplished today. We gotta sketch. Sketching is the main thing today. And then read some feedback on some previous sketches and then break it down into actions. Then I need to sketch a portfolio piece. My agent spoke to me the other day, the glorious, amazing queen that is Alex from the Bright Agency. And she asked me for a landscape portfolio piece to go on the other side of my portfolio page. Because as you know, London Book Fair and Bologna Book Fair are coming up. People are making meetings. Agents bring portfolio sheets to said meetings that show off your best work from the previous year. So I need one extra piece to go on like a large, no bleed scale on the back. I have some ideas, I will read them out to you. The first idea is mountain view, magical kingdom, mountains, beauty. Framed off by shrubbery, magical botanicals, things that wanna chip and bite, beautiful clouds in the sky, just like gorgeous, like old school fantasy frame. And then a magical hero with a gorgeous staff, just like climbing her little way up a path towards us in the foreground. Idea number two, fierce female warrior dragging a dragon's head that has like five swords running through it. Just this dragon's been not killed, slaughtered. And she's dragging this through this like deserted rocky patch. And there's a gorgeous castle in the distance. Almost like it's just like an outline of a castle, but like a gorgeous castle thing behind her. Before I go, I also made myself a lovely new headshot for my author and illustrator photos that are on the backs of books. It looks like this. Originally, I wanted to go with something a little bit towing on the line of ridiculous, so this was my first thought. But my literary agent saw this and said, not in this world, don't do it. So this is what we stuck with, basically. Now, I'm gonna turn the camera around and show you what I'm dabbling with, viewing-wise, so that you can get a break from my gross face, okay? So, on the agenda today, we have a show on Disney called Demons and Saviors. It's a documentary about a girl who's known as Poltergeist Girl. Also, two house updates, very random. Number one, I bought this guy from a thrift shop. Look at his little face. Look at how he stood there like a gentleman. Update number two, we now have a board game show. Something happened like two months ago now where we played Ticket to Ride like particularly good one night and we've been obsessed since. I went away from the camera and as soon as I did that, a new board game delivery happened. So I thought we might open it together. I'm slaughtering this box so bad. I may be ill, but I still have my strength. That was the worst reveal in history, but I'm not refilming it. We have been eyeing this game for such a long time. Look at how beautiful the art is, first of all. Second of all, it's a co-op interactive game where you need to save a little village from a number of classic monsters. Down there's the real Dracula! Prove it! <laughs> All right, continue. And also, if I'm not mistaken, you can play this with one person. Like, one person can play this on their own. I'm so excited to add this to the collection. It's so gorgeous. Thank you. 
for me and this glass nipple that you see. This is sugar, by the way. It's not anything freaky. My eyes are still watering from the flu, so I see stuff very prismatic. It is currently the morning of the 31st of January, and the perfect opportunity has presented itself for me to close this video off on a very positive note, because we started off strong. There was traveling, drawing, reading, London, bookshops, graphic novels, and then we slowly descended into chaos and flu where nothing happened. It was no plot, just vibes like I previously mentioned. Now this thing that I'm about to show you just came in the mail literally minutes ago and it is... It is the first book I ever illustrated professionally as an artist. It's called Felix and the Blorg. It's not even out in shops yet. This is like an advanced copy that like every artist and author will get some advanced copies when the book is printed and sent to the distribution centers and about to be like published officially. A big thank you to Oxford University Press for being my very first client and taking on somebody completely unknown to do this title with them. As you can tell, it was a very small project. It's only about 32 pages of graphic novel material. Before this, when I would see people open their packages of advanced copies, I would always think, does it have that much of an impact? pack to see it in like its published form because surely you've been looking at it for so long on paper or digitally like you've been staring at this for a long time by the time that it comes out like this and I can admit when I'm wrong because I saw this physically and I damn near fainted and yeah I thought I might show you this as a little finisher to the video because it came in the mail yes that is it for me for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Through all the ups and downs, I understand there wasn't necessarily a point to the majority of what happened here today, but that's fine because us artists have a very solitary career and sometimes it's just nice to be able to listen to somebody do stuff and feel like you're not alone. So hopefully that was accomplished in some capacity. Thank you so much for watching. And I will see you again next month with more graphic novel stuff. Bye! <laughs>